welcome to this video. This video deals with the Scotch Four Knights and the way to get to that opening. So we're dealing with basically everything that happens after e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. Our choice is knight to c3, which technically is the three knights game not um, a name that is particularly popular or well known so i decided to simply call this video scotch four nights even though there are parts of it about the three nights game um but three nights again nobody knows what that's supposed to be so why are we going for the scotch four nights i just want to show you first of all what that is after knight f6 my repertoire choice is d4 and after e takes and i takes we reach the scotch four knights starting position in a way so first of all this is a very very well respected and um, and uh, classical opening it has been played for a very long time the oldest game that i have is from from the 1900s um the Scotch Four Knights has a very sound and solid reputation. The reason is that White's development is extremely fluid and quick, and we are also um, usually enjoying a very, very nice pawn structure that makes it notoriously difficult to beat from the black side. I have my own experiences there, playing e4, e5 for a long time with the black pieces. So. This is um, our choice against e4, e5. Basically, it will happen most of the time in double king pawn. The alternatives, just to give you some insight what I was also checking, the alternatives that I checked um, are mostly, of course, the rule of with bishop to b5, the Italian game with bishop to c4, or the scotch, let's say the regular scotch move order. Um, I was considering those alternatives, but the Royal Lopez and the Italian game did not really, um, in my mind, fit that bill of keeping it simple. It's just um, an extreme maze of variation. In, in particular, the Royal Lopez, black has a really, really huge um, variety of ideas that you need to check. The Italian is a bit easier to access but um, it's still it's still it's still huge also i felt and this is my experience from being um, a chess coach for a while um, oftentimes e4 players rather want an open position it's called the open games um, they want an open position where they can calculate variation and peace play peace play is more prominent and this is what you get with the Scorch Four Knights. The position will definitely open up. This is not so much the case for the Italian game or the Rui, because the lines that actually promise something are closed with d3, c3, slowish game. So this is my choice, because I think this is the open game of the open game, so to say, the Scotch. I thought about um, also going with the regular Scotch move order, three, d4 right here but decided that it's uh, for our purposes simpler to stick to the other move order in the regular scotch you can get the same position of course and this will happen actually quite frequently but black has some additional options like bishop c5 which is the most popular alternative or bishop to b4 which i have played quite a bit um, however if you know the Scotch Four Knights, and after watching this video and studying this on Chessable, you will know it. Um, employing the regular Scotch is not um, a huge step, so it can be a very um, welcome addition to your opening repertoire later. You have to check out some line against Bishop C5 and B4, and if you find something there that you like, then you can already employ the opening. So. It's an easy step to expand from what you learn here. Um, so we go knight c3. Knight f6, as mentioned, is the main move and by far the move that you will face um, face the most, regardless of uh, what your opposition is. It's, it's fairly obvious that this should be one of the main choices 
completing um, the knight's development and preparing castling. However, we need to check the alternatives and they range, um, none of them is really great, but um, yeah, there's still, there are differences, let's say. Um, I want to start with a move that you will encounter um, by comparison relatively often, the move bishop to c5. This is actually um, a nice thing about this move order with three knight to c3, that this move that looks completely normal and natural is actually not that good. We um, gain a nice game, nice advantage by taking on e5. This um, type of um, yeah, pseudo sacrifice, it's not really a sacrifice, um, is well known in the open games and here very nice for us. We need to check now two moves, black recapturing after which we get the piece back with d4 or black giving up the bishop on f2. This actually happens quite often and this is uh, good news for us because after king takes, knight takes d4, our position will be a lot better. The reason is our central dominance and the bishop pair, which is um, yeah, two advantages that uh, add up very nicely. However, we need to check one particular idea here that can be tricky. The move that I'm talking about is the move queen to f6, and this will probably happen there most of the time. If black does not play that and retreats with the knight, we will, let's say, he would go here or, or here, um, our simple recipe would be to castle by hand. Yeah, bishop e2, rook f1, king g1. And the bishop pair and the central advantage would be very nice for us. So the tricky move is queen to f6 check. We go to g1. And now an important thing first of all to notice is that we are not actually threatening to take the knight. Yeah, if we, like let's say black plays knight to e7, yeah, we cannot take this piece as queen b6 is all of a sudden a checkmate. Now that's embarrassing, don't do that. So important to note, we don't threaten the knight. If black actually does play knight e7, and is a, that's a tricky move, we should simply develop this bishop to e3, which covers everything and now actually threatens to take the piece. Yeah, the same kind of uh, um, tactical idea could happen if let's say black goes back and then you should not do this yeah, because uh, they might take yeah? <laughs> again this idea. So pay attention to that. Another tricky idea here for black is knight g4. This is actually a move that either loses or wins in a way because black threatens here with mate and threatens here. And it's actually not that easy now for white. You only have one move available that prevents the loss, but it happens to, yeah, win is a bit strong, but it's close to it. After queen d2, covering here and here, White is in fact a lot better. We have the already mentioned advantages of bishop pair and center. And now on top, this knight now is really in a bad spot for black. If we go h3 next, the knight would have to drop back to a very miserable post on h6. So this capture on f2 is, um, is an excellent position really. Leads to an excellent position for us. After knight takes e5, the relatively better choice is knight takes e5. Black just takes it. I hope you enjoyed this preview of the Keep It Simple e4 repertoire. You can get the full course on chessable.com, which features the move trainer that makes it easy and simple to learn all the lies and remember them. Um, all lines are chosen with one thing in mind. Keep it simple for you and make it difficult for your opponent.